Hello everyone, my name is Putty and welcome back. Have I still unlocked like speeches? It's been a while. Uh, welcome to another episode of Oli. We are here, live, for the final time actually, on Camel Tres. Our Camel Tres finale uh, for El Dia Nacional de Lucha. Ooh, it's lovely, it's fantastic. How far away am I from uh, I'm walking? So Wow! Apparently I'm heading this way, Loyalty Iron Fist. I think that's actually the worst thing possible because, yeah, that's fair. I guess to to unlock Velvet Glove now, you're supposed to like do nothing on your events, which is, ah, eh, okay, that's fine. At least I'm doing ribs and stuff. Like I'm a I'm a happy boss. I'm the guy. Let's do a, a rib on. Uh, let's do a let's step it a, a bit further. Practical joke on El Critico, who's like never like not done anything for months. All right, does nothing. Don't worry, he'll see he'll see. You'll see a match tonight. It's a big show. It's a uh, hundred and eighty minutes, or well, like hundred two hundred and twenty-five max, because it's. Uh, I think this is like the biggest show of the year, in a way. So it's unfortunate that we're not main eventing with anything spectacular, but it's good, and it's it's our, it's the future of the company in a lot of ways. We got a sixty-nine pop uh, Kirk Jameson or Teodor Alpha, and sixty-five pop uh, Mister Lucha Three. So yeah, it's a it's a big match. It's an important match. It's good. 35 minutes we'll go on it. Yeah, they can go with that. And uh, it'll be... Mr. Lucha's gonna win. We're gonna do... Uh, we won't do storytelling, even though it is kind of a story match. We'll just do regular open call. Slow build, decisive. No no Mexican title online. Yeah, main event. Proper thing. Like, maybe go... Maybe go more on it. 39? Like, they're... They're good stuff. Yeah. And what's your psych? Is it B? or is Yeah, it's B. What's Kirk's? It's B-, minus, right? Nah, they should do this. They should be able to do like like a proper thirty nine minute match. Yeah, let's do it. All right, and then also let's get our boys, the generals, the generals, generals, yeah. in on, on this. Let's get the women's title in on this. Yeah, why not? The girls are the the dream team is not in a tag team match yet, so we'll do that. Um, can we add the ring generals to this? Our team. Oh, are they already in here? No, they're not. Where are the ring generals? We have the ring generals, don't we? Dean and Marv. The ring generals. You already have a team with that name. Oh, are they inactive or something? Inactive unit, yeah. Weird that they're inactive. <laughs> Super weird, but oh. Okay. And then we'll do, uh, obviously, the match we had planned, which is Los Monteros versus... The Ring Generals, Ring Generals. How long have you had the titles, lads? You have had them for a year now? Yeah, over a year. Almost like almost a year and a month. So let's do uh, 10 minutes. Can't do too long with this one because they're not over in Mexico. And let's put the titles on our boys. Yeah, why not? Why the hell not? Yeah, here I am, like getting rid of one confederation of the territories title. If we if we had held off on dropping the belt off of Nicholas, we would have had all of the titles on people that we we have, <laughs> or or uh, but right now because Joanne obviously has the women's one. So don't have any confederation of the territories girls to fight over with. By the way, um, if I know the only person who really cared about the joint shows was Dave, um, but Dave, uh, the idea behind the joint shows now I've come up, up to it. We have a lot of spare time in like January to March. Where there's not a big amount of pay-per-views going on. They are almost pay-per-views. I'm not even going to take that one back. Um, so that's from now on going to be when we run our joint show. And we might do two next year. I don't know. I've got one plan for Maw. I think Maw's going to be the show we run joint with next year. We're also planning on doing a joint show with non-Confederation Territory Company. But we'll announce that next year. Uh, okay, Joanne's going to be the winner. Uh, high spots match. Open. And put the women's title on the line. There you go. Because it's a, it's a super card. Like, we're going to put fucking tons of titles on the line. The only one that's not going to be on the line is our world title. Oh, and the Mexican title. My bad. So we'll do... Uh, we'll add the rest from pre -book. So we got Pesadilla versus Purple Vipes. 20 minutes, or 21 minutes, we'll say. Uh, Campeonatos de las Mujeres. 25 minutes. Pesadilla is going to win. Tainted... Tainted, outside interference finish, interference, interference from her boy, La Sombra, there you go, 
have it be dirty. And then also we have the Eternal Kings versus the Shadow Riders, which is probably going to go on second to last. 30 minutes for the Pejeres titles. La Sombra is going to win the match. She's going to pin Marcos. Flores. Open. Oop. Open this up. Open, cold, slow build. Uh, tainted finish. Interference on Marcos by Pesadilla. Outside interference finish. Outside interference finish. And then if I can, I'm going to keep both of the other guys strong. Uh, what can we lose off of this? Call in the ring. There we go. And we'll also do storytelling as the aim. Uh, that one's weird. That's from Big Glitch. There we go. Now we gotta actually keep it strong. Damn it. Nicholas Lopez to win. That's a kept strong. And there we go. Okay, we've currently booked 126 minutes. 180 is the, like, recommended run time. I haven't booked any of the demons. <laughs> We're just like, okay. I guess we'll book the next fateful inc inc encounter between Tress Phoenix and, uh, Amo Delgato and Evil Intent and, yeah. You know, this match that gets run when we just can't b bother to think of anything <laughs> for any of these characters. Uh, that's fine. I mean, this match isn't going to do great because Ammo is kind of the guy who carries these matches usually. But we'll go like 10 minutes high spots match because Ammo's hurt. <laughs> and we will have uh, the guys retain. Because I like the demons. And this probably won't open the show. We'll probably come up with something better to open the show. What do we have left? What do we have left? Silver Tiger isn't booked and he's really good. Is Silver Tiger still here? Yeah, he is. I'm like, wait, what? What happened to Silver Tiger? Okay, excluding Booked, we have Silver Tiger who can take on El Hijo Espada Roja. That seems like a reasonable opener. Yeah, I think people are probably going to like that one. And uh, I want Silver Tiger to win because he's the one, like to me, that has the most upside, even though I, I think Roja came from SWF or something. And, uh, no, sorry, from South of the Border. So it's like, um, <clears throat> I, like it's probably it's probably the case that it's, uh, Silver Tiger, sorry, that Roja actually has the more upside, but Silver Tiger's been doing really good stuff for us. So we can have the Demon Brothers take on Electric Blue. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it seems like reasonable. And uh, even though I like both of those girls, I'm just going to have the Demon Brothers go over. Go over. Yes, they're very unhappy. They're like, no, we're not jobbing to those fuckers. Like, you know what, you're fully entitled not to. Still unhappy. Oh, evil's being kept strong for some reason. Oh yeah, never mind. I'm... I didn't do any of that right. Okay. The swordsman will go over this time, because he should. There we go. Electric Dreamer and Celeste can go. Can we kept strong? Oh, that'll be a match we'll put in there somewhere. Um, okay, I feel like we can do this. What we can do here is we can cool the crowd. Calm the crowd. Here we want to work the crowd. And then here we're going to lift the crowd. I know I was going to do storytelling, but let's do lift the crowd instead. Oh, God damn it. Lift the crowd. And keep Nicolas Lopez strong. There we go. And then we don't have a storytelling match anymore. Uh, but that's okay, because we have some guys left to book. At least we should have some guys left to book. We are an 8-match card at the moment. I'm going to want a 10-match card if we're going any higher. So, Finalizando can take on... Not Trey Vida. That's a match for a couple couple months down the line for sure, though. Uh, Tricolor Junior. We've had this match a couple times. We'll have it again. Finlazando can win. Good versus evil. You know the stuff. Storytelling. Open. And keep. Tricolor strong. Really? Come on, Finlazando. Intimidate him. Do your thing, bro. You know what to do. Uh, is there anybody, uh, in, by who are the, because we're obviously going to book another match. Critico versus Raven Nightfall. Yeah, that's a good match. El Critico versus Raven Nightfall. And we can go 
70 minutes on it. Critico's going to win and do a storytelling match with that too. And put that before it. Like, these four matches have to go in that order at the end. But aside from that, we're pretty open with everything else we can do. Okay, I like this card. I think it's a super card. I think it's good. I think there's a lot that we can do with it. But I'm going to put two promos early in the night, and I think they're obvious which ones they're going to be. We're going to have Tirador cut a promo on Mr. Lucha early in the night. And we're going to have Mr. Lucha cut a promo on Tirador. Pretty typical pay-per-view stuff there. After all of the demons versus dragons bullshit, we've actually gotten to the point where we're doing like atypical pay-per-view booking. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy that we managed to get to that point. We've managed to calm ourselves down enough for a week so that we can do this super card without everyone like who's tuning in just to see the super card going, what the fuck is this dragon shit? Um, but I think what would be cool is if we did have... Uh, oh, what's, her, what's his name? I know it's Vida. But I keep forgetting the first part of it. Treyar Vida and Finaliz Finalizado. Sando. Finalizando. They're going to actually have a, like, a, like a backstage talk where Treyar is like... Hey, it's he's not doing like he's not he's not ignorant. He knows not to use the power and, and Finlandos like that's what you said about Emmanuel Prieto and look what happened there. And uh, Finlandos is having none of it. He's not 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 even close to allowing uh, the powers of. Uh, of uh, Mr. Lucha to beca become unchecked again. And we're going to open the show with, I think I think the crowd will be happy to see Gino Mo Montero to open the show. Unscripted, just get out there and cut a promo. And uh, get the crowd hyped up for the for the night ahead. Alright, I think this is a pretty cool super card. It's a ton of freaking time. But uh, I think people are going to enjoy it. So we're live on Canal Tres. Oh, let's get rocking and rolling. 96 A star, Gino Montero is like, yeah, bro, ya bitch we are starting off oh god not a big not a big crowd tonight that's okay though uh started off ya bitch it's uh gonna be a big night tonight i'm gonna win the tri uh, the tag titles it's gonna be awesome then a 75 b minus as silver tiger defeated el hijo espada roja still with that bad pairing but it's fine we'll come up with once he gets pushed which will be soon i think um he'll get a a, a repackage and stuff bad bad injury for him and some heat on Aspada Roja, shit. Wow. Oh. Oh. Mmm, game. Those are women. Those are not jobbers. They are women's division workers. Mmm, I wonder if that's a glitch. Might have to report that one. It's okay, though, because it brings us back up with a Teardor Alpha promo. Good stuff. Then a 70C+. plus. Delgado, with his injury, is still head and shoulders above everyone else. And uh, El Ingendro del Inferno... Retain the trio's titles against Tress Phoenix. Then Final Izando defeats Tricolor Junior in a 59C. In a 62C, uh, Trio Vida and Final Izando have an argument backstage. Then Joan Rodriguez defends her women's title, her Confederation of Territories women's title against Queen Amazon. In a 67C, C, plus, that's not bad. El Critico defeated Raven Nightfall. In a 94A, fuck, Mr. Lucha cuts a promo about Tirador. 67C+, plus. that's freaking amazing for the generals who are pretty... Like, I don't think they're at all over in Mexico. 90 from freaking Gino. Um, Los Monteros defeat the ring generals with a Montero Mountain. Los Monteros win the Confederation of the World of the Territories World Tag Team titles. 62C, this wasn't good. This wasn't the semi-main, was it? I think it might have been, you know. No, 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 it wasn't. In about the feature, good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd. Pesadilla defeated Purple Viper uh, by two straight falls. Makes defense number two of her champion, Apto de Mujeres title. Then in 75B-, minus, the Shadow Riders defeated the Eternal Kings when La Sombra defeated Marcos Flores, uh, following interference from P Pesadilla. Shadow Riders make defense number five of their pair of Harris titles. Cosmic Riders improving in performance skills. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just right into the main event now. Here we go. Main event. 74B-. minus. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. They probably weren't ready for this big spot. And it might have been a length thing, too. Let's have a look what was wrong with it. Uh, penalized for length. Went on too long for a mid-level match. Pretty sure he's a main eventer. Huh. Okay, well, these two will go at it again another day, I'm sure. So, Lucha 3 wins with a third strike. Oh, okay, then. 
And uh, that's the end of the show, which gets a 72 behind us. Oh, well. Um, Finlazando and uh, Espadachin were used too much. But who... Uh, so, Mr. Lucha with that massive promo, and Gino with that massive promo deserves some credit. Who else was amazing tonight? Probably... Oh, yeah, Gino. I was like, oh, probably Gino. Uh, Ammo still. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I know that main event probably could have done much better if I hadn't given it so much time, but I... I don't think that was too long for those two, but I guess it was. I guess that's fair. But, uh, oh well, maybe they'll have a rematch. Probably not, though, because i got other plans for them going forward. So, overall, though, uh, Phoenix 3 is a, needs some more booking. So it needs, needs some more booking. Uh, Phoenix 3 apparently wants some more momentum. We can probably do that for him. 56, so that's over 400,000 viewers watching live. Awesome, 422,000 viewers. That's always good. And hopefully we increased by one point in Mexico. We didn't. We didn't. But well, that's okay. That's probably fine. Um, it might not It might not be fine. Let's have a look. Selection Mexico. Uh, yes, we have now met the popularity requirements of Selection Mexico. So, what are the requirements? So we need music levels up. And we need... For los poites hoy... Let's deport it uh, We need broadcast quality. Broadcast quality and music levels need to increase. So let's go into production, broadcast quality upgrades, and music to minor licensed. And then let's head over to broadcasting and hope we can cancel these deals. Negotiate. Cancel deal for events. Cool. And then negotiate. Cancel deal for Pro La Noche. They want us to complete the contract for Paul Noche. That's fair. That's not going to ruin too much. Um, and that's going to run for how much longer? Uh, about two months. Okay. So about till the end of the year. And, and we can wrap with them. I, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. But if you want us to stay, I think we deserve a new time slot. Bitches. No. They're like, no, you're, you've, you signed the contract. Stick to it, you sons of bitches. And I'm like, uh, well, you have a point. You do indeed have a point. So... There we go. Let's have a look at Selección Mexico, who are open to negotiations, and we will have a deal for events. Uh, wait, can we actually do a deal for... Oh, I guess we... Oh, we can run TV shows on pay-per-view. That's interesting. So, length of deal is going to be nine months, number of episodes, unlimited, prime time. Not long to office the time slot. Evening. Early evening. Wow! Selección Mexico are like, no! No, we're not. We're not doing that. How about afternoon? Okay, they're willing to do that. Yeah, yeah. Early afternoon pay-per-view deals. Sure. There we are. We now have a pay-per-view deal. Hopefully that will increase our revenue. So get some extra pay-per-view revenue in. Yeah, it's looking it's looking pretty good for the old Oli right now. Let's take a look at our main eventers and stuff and see how everyone's doing in terms of pop. Hoping Gino and Mr. Lucha got some big pop increases from those promos. Um... So, Mr. Lucha is not on the is not on the main event yet, which is sad. But Gino is up there, yep. Gino's getting there. I wonder if Gino's ready for a figurehead now with that pop. We'll have a look in a second. Um, so, Mr. Lucha 3 is... Did he even increase? He did, but not much. That's surprising, considering how good the promos were. How's Pasadilla doing? She's, you know, she's a reasonable mid-card talent at this point. I don't think she even improved from that promo, but that's fine. We'll get there. Whoa, whoa. Ah, Fuyuku Higa is the figurehead of 5-star. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Uh, what about our boys? We'll check their pop. Uh, might as well at this point. You guys know who they are. But uh, we will check the pop. So, Evil is... Yeah, he's getting there. Totally getting there. Uh, Espadachin is also getting there. Cool. Joan Rodriguez, totally... It's good to see. La Sombra is still super over. Uh, G we check Gino. But how's Nicholas after the, like constantly losing on pay-per-view? Eh, it's still good. Yeah, it's still good. I don't think there's really much else to check. Silver Tiger's good. Slayer's good. Amul Delgato's real good. Because he's amazing. Yeah, not too much else to check. Not really much needing to check. Just continuing to tell our stories and the pop will come. Uh, oh, Tirador. Tirador is probably a big one to check. 
yeah, he's up. Uh, he's up by two points in West Central Mexico, and he's up everywhere else pretty nicely too. He'll be he'll be taken away from us soon. <laughs> I just have to brace myself for it. All right. How about our figurehead? Is Gino an adequate choice yet? La Sombra is a little more over apparently. Uh, Nicholas has more star quality. Marcos is more over. He's slightly overshadowed by others in the main event scene. All right, it's time. Gino Montero is the uh, the figurehead of Ole. Good stuff. So he's the actual ace. I, I'm gonna like that dynamic with Nicholas is kind of the ace, but Gino is the actual ace. And uh, we now need to worry about. I think it's La Sombra and Gino. Sorry, La Sombra and Nicholas are uh, more over than he is. So clearly we need to bury both of them. God, like Adam has designed this game so that I would understand Vince's pain. Like it's like yeah. This guy, these guys are more over than my figurehead. I clearly need to bury them. <laughs> like, okay. But yeah, we now have Gino Montero as a figurehead. And in about a year's time, he will start to reap, hopefully, some benefits for us. Or he'll be sniped by them, which will be very sad. But, uh, yeah. Did he get a morale bonus from being appointed, I wonder? Nope. That's fine. Cool. He is clean cut, right? Clean cut, great gimmick, over as heck... Over as hell. Uh, no, I shouldn't say over as hell, because we have demons on the roster now. Those are the people that are over as hell. They're over literally as hell. <laughs> that's that's who they are. They are hell. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with everything else. Uh, let's take a look at the titles. 71 for these. That's maxed out. Now, it still stayed at 90. Good. I was hoping it wouldn't drop. The last Mujeres title. Is that gone down? No, it's still doing pretty well. Universal title is still, <coughs> still doing fine. Uh, I wanted to, the reason why I've kind of slowed down with title defenses for that is because one of the things in Mexico is a lot of feuds are built on uh, matches with wagers and, and other things rather than titles. You don't see a lot of title defenses. And I felt like I defended it quite a bit early on in the series. Like, we've had, I think, five defenses, right? Yeah, five defenses, and I think we should probably slow down on that. And, uh, and yeah, that's why I've slowed down a bit on it. But we will see defenses again, probably one or two more before the end of the year. Or, or maybe not. But we'll hope, possibly. Alright, aside from that, I hope you guys have enjoyed... Oh, before we go, I want to check owner goals to see if there's anything I need to be paying attention to. No, it's all negative obligations, not positive obligations. So that's fine. So it's all must-not-do things, and they usually give me warnings if I'm about to break one of those. So, everything is going good. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you guys for the next episode of Por la Noche en Fantamiento, where we are building, I think it's only a month before the next special... Uh, Revolution in October. Specials for the rest of the year, now monthly. So look forward to that. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, adios, amigos. <laughs>